So tell us about all things D and what you're up to and, and about the blog and sure and, and, right. and and your uh, meteoric rise up the leaderboard of Tech Meme. It's very impressive. Uh -huh. uh, so all things digital, I think, is two and a half years old. It's it's a blog the the blog website online publication that accompanies all things digital, which is the super successful uh, conference that Walt Mossberg and Kara Swisher. Here is formerly the journal, Walt still the journal, have been doing for Dow Jones for six years, now going on seven. So that's a very successful conference. A couple years ago they launched this blog uh, to sort of capitalize on, on the success of that and extend it out into actual reporting and writing. Let's talk about uh, venture capital for a moment. There's been uh, a lot of blog posts you've probably picked up on over the last few days about the end of venture capital or it's not relevant or... Um, Peter, looking at innovation and startups and uh, the marketplace, what is the role of venture capital? Has it changed? Is it over? Where does it stand uh, now in, in this current cycle? I don't want to come off as authority on venture capital because I'm not. Um, uh, you get a lot of posts about the end of venture capital. There's a now conventional wisdom, which has suddenly appeared, didn't appear in the last year, that actually venture capital has always been a lousy way to allocate money. Um, and if you take out the returns from the bubble years of 98 and 99, that venture capital has always had a bad return for investors. But whatever, I'm not going to pretend I know anything about that. Um, what I am interested in is, is whether investors are raising money to invest, i.e. whether you know, Fred Wilson and Union Square Ventures can raise money to invest in these startups, and whether they are investing. And it seems like the top tier firms are still have been able to raise some money um, and are still investing that money. Um, it's going to be a lot harder to get money in the next year or so, but there's still money out there. Uh, there's a big concern that some of the sort of second tier firms and below um, aren't going to have their capital calls met. That's when they actually go to the investors and say, time to pony up the cash you promised us. Some of these investors are going to walk away. There's lots of rumors about that happening. So far, I think there's only one documented case where someone has literally not done that that's Washington Mutual. There will be more. Um, but I, I've called around and sort of the, the, the bigger players, I guess not all of them want to be named that I've talked to, said that they realize it's grim out there, but they've still been able to raise money, um, which means they have to allocate that money in the next couple of years. So things are, people are still going to invest in stuff. And if you're a real opportunist, you say now's a great time to be investing in stuff because it's going to be at a much cheaper valuation than it would have been a year ago. Where, where do you think things are going in terms of sort of the, let's talk about first the, the bigger media players. Um, who have been involved with digital media uh, and also some of the startups and I don't know where 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 you see some things where, where where things are developing or where they might be going. Well, everyone is in the everyone who who creates content for a living, um, leaving aside distribution for a minute, it's a different business. But who creates content is trapped. It doesn't matter if you're a small blog or if you're NBC. You're all at the same problem right now, which is if. You sell something via analog means, i.e. TV broadcast or DVDs, I guess technically aren't analog, but you get what I'm saying. Um, it commands a certain amount of money, either from a consumer will pay money for it or an advertiser will pay you some amount of money to advertise on it. Uh, if that, once that thing becomes digitized, goes on a screen, um, and you try to make money selling ads, you can make a little bit of money, but not very much. Um, so if you're only making a digital product, it's very hard to make a living. And if you're used to making a lot of money selling it in an analog form, you're making a lot less. And the succinct way of putting this is Jeff Zucker's sort of now cliche, but still true, comment about seeing analog dollars turn into digital pennies. So that's what everyone is grappling with right now. As a consumer, it's great because you get all this stuff. Almost all of it's for free. You can have it whenever you want. Um, almost all of it's legal now, too. You don't have to worry about breaking the law by taking off, uh, you know, by watching Lost. You can watch it Lost for free on ABC.com. It's great whenever you want. Uh, as, a cons as a producer of that stuff, though, it's a different problem. Who are some of the big companies uh, you think that are well positioned now? Tough. Uh, I mean, a lot of them are well positioned if you're in a long, if you're taking a long run perspective. I think um, so. That'd be all the networks. Anyone who owns a stu uh, any studio that owns a library of content. I think if you have a long run view, that stuff should all be very valuable. They're only making a finite number of really good movies or TV shows per year. Um, the fact that people have access to home video cameras and Pro Tools to make music, etc., doesn't increase the amount of good stuff made every year. So if you're long run, great, I think. Uh, the problem is all these companies are all publicly held companies, they've got to manage for the quarter, and quarter by quarter they're getting beaten up, which is why you're seeing layoffs at all the major media companies this year and into next year as well.